Hey gamers! Do you know that feeling you get when you've jumped 999 times in the Final Fantasy IX jump roping minigame only to miss on the thousandth jump? Well, that's how I felt the last few decades. It's me, Jason. And I'm 50 hours of your life you spent on Blitzball that you'll never get back. It's me, Patrick. Welcome to RP Gamer Season 3, Episode 13, a podcast about RPG minigames. That is right. Like Patrick said, we are season three, episode 13. This is our last episode of season no. three. No, exactly. No, this was by far the most fun season. We'll, we'll talk about that later, too. But uh, yeah, RPG mini games and the the potential time waste and the time sinks they have. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, um, Jason, I know this might be a silly way to phrase this question, but I think it's one of those things that's kind of important. We talk about like. When did you notice you were a gamer or identify that way? When did you notice RPG mini games? Like, I'm sure you'd played them in games yeah. before, but when did you notice like this was a thing? Because I had to think about that mm-hmm. um, and it, it, it may not be the same. So why, why don't you go ahead and go first? Yeah, I had to think about it too. And if if I had to go back to just like RPG specific mini games, I think it was probably Super Mario RPG. Um I don't know if I'd really count the the a Caracola where you're making like the music note in a mini game, but definitely the the Boshi Yoshi racing game. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the earliest ones. And I, I hated that, by the way. Um, I think if, if I went further back for non RPG related, like there was mini games in Mario Brothers three, for example. So like those were kind of cool. Um, but I think I. First, oh, yeah. Like the matchy, the matching thing. cards like you, yeah. spin, you know, you match the face and all that jazz. Um, I think if I really thought like, oh, here's a mini game that I don't know if I like it, but I need to do it. It was my intro it was doing the uh the jump rope jumps in final fantasy 9 and just thinking like oh cool like there's this little corner you can jump with this oh, was it one of those like little rat kids i can't really remember and yeah then, so i think it's the two rat kids yeah yeah and then like maybe 10 minutes later i'm only getting to jump like 20 and 25 and i'm getting really pissed and then i realized like years later like oh there's a there's a tetra master card there and i like tetra master <laughs> and so right. they're all like we're which connecting. also we will get to soon I'm oh sure. absolutely <laughs> absolutely but i think it was at that time when i reflected back uh, for this podcast recording that i was like yeah that's probably the earliest two times i can really recount recount rpg minigames but what about you when when's your first so uh kind of like you i i know like super mario rpg and chrono trigger came before what i'm really gonna say for me mm-hmm. and those games had mini games but i don't think it really clicked that mini games were a thing until about final fantasy 7 or breath of fire 3 especially okay. breath of fire 3 um Ooh, I've, because... played, I've played some of that like I, I might know what you mean yeah, like I feel like in Chrono Trigger um or in Super Mario RPG, they were like um parallel with the narrative mm. for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Um where in uh the other two they were very like tangential. Like you mm-hmm. really didn't even need to do them in the first place. Yeah. Um and I think there were there were a lot more like rewards there too so i think there was a lot more going on for those games and the variety as well that popped up and i remember being like oh god 12 maybe Mm -hmm. and playing those and that's i feel like when you want to start to spend more time on something that isn't the main quest is when you really start to notice a mini game and like what the mini game experience is because early RPGs, again, like we say this a lot, didn't have that, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah. by, by that, I mean like it was not necessarily an option. I can't think of any mini games in Lufia one. I can't really think of any mini games in Lunar Silver Star Story. You know, it wasn't always mm. something that was present, present like it front is and center. Now. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I think um, you had mentioned uh, Final Fantasy VII, and I'm assuming you're talking about Chocobo Racing, maybe snowboarding, one of those two. Oh, like literally so many different things, even just like the Golden Saucer yeah, stuff. Yeah, just in, in mean, general, the, the, Golden Saucer. The entirety, yeah, the entirety yeah. of the Golden Saucer, you know, is True. just mini games upon mini games. Um, so I think like there, that's kind of like the biggest part. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what for you, I think we kind of need to also identify... Um, because when we were doing the pre-planning for this episode, 
Um, I know there were some things that kind of came up that we weren't sure of, but what constitutes a mini game for you? So I think you put it really well earlier. You used the word, which I always say, I, I think I say it wrong. Tangentially, tan- tangentially, tangentially, tan- tangentially. Thank you. Leave all that in uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> when it is tangential to the gameplay. I think that's the best time that you see a, a RPG mini game. So like, um, I don't know, maybe maybe Chocobo racing, because there is, I think, at some point you, you have to do some of it. But uh, when I don't think you ever do, though. Like, I think it, it is just was for... there was there one race you had to do? I don't know. I can't remember. It's been ages since I played. Yeah, it's I've the same. It's been a long well, time. Well, regardless, the, the point I'm trying to make is like you, you get introduced to this thing. And like you said, you don't ever have to do it. Like you don't have to touch it if you don't want to. It's just there. It, it's in varying degrees of quality for the gameplay, but it's it's there. And uh, I, th- I think those are the the best ones. But it in terms of what constitutes a mini game, I think it's just something that is different from the normal gameplay. So if we keep picking on Final Fantasy, it's a turn based RPG. So as long as you're doing something in the game that you're hopefully having fun with, that's not going to a menu, hitting attack or magic and then attacking an enemy. I think that's what makes it a mini game in the loosest terms. Yeah, I think kind of like a mini game is like you were saying i don't necessarily think it has to be something tangent Mm -hmm. um and i want to i'll hit on that maybe a little later because i think there are a lot of games that do have mini games that aren't tangent like they are just a a part of the the narrative um but i wouldn't constitute it as something like in paper mario or mario rpg the way you do combat and h- uh, how you yeah. might constitute like the varying degrees of doing special attacks as a mini game, because I would just say that's a game mechanic. So yeah, I would, I I would say a mini game is not necessarily a game mechanic. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say it's, it is padding. Um, yeah, most likely it is. And that's kind of what they add to a game overall is just like more, but obviously you don't want too much padding because we do see some games where it's just, there's just way too many mini games Mm -hmm. um and what could have been a 20 to 30 hour experience is like an 80 hour experience especially if you're completionist but most importantly i think they add an element of being a palate cleanse yeah um and i'm actually going to refer this to uh something that happened last night when scott and i were watching tv um we were watching the show barry have you watched it uh i have not that's the one though hbo with who is it that's in it uh bill hater bill hater it's, yeah, show, that guy. it's a show with bill hater yeah 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 um and it's a pretty serious show and mm-hmm. it, it, but it's also a funny show but the the humor has mostly been like little tongue in cheeks but then you get to this one episode in the second season mm. and i'm not gonna like ruin it but yeah, i've heard it's good mm-hmm it it, it it just like it's the stupidest funniest thing i've ever seen in my entire life and they took this like usually because he's a hitman and he kills mm-hmm. people and whatnot and they take this one episode and it is like the funny episode and some serious stuff has happened up to that point so like getting to my point it's such a palate cleanse in the season where you have a lot of like some darker undertones as to what's going on mm-hmm. um, to have this one episode where you're like, what is going on? And it's just <laughs> wild and hilarious. And I think that's what mini games add to a yeah. lot of games where, you know, you might have a serious narrative like final fantasy seven, final fantasy eight. Um, and I think it's nice to have that little escape while you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, because sometimes, you know, a narrative can be just such, such a slog. Yeah. Um, I think games like final fantasy 13, didn't have really many games. They mostly just leaned on side quests. And I think that's one of the reasons why the game wasn't as successful because it really leaned into that like linear structure. Yeah. So definitely mini games can add non-linearity for sure. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I liked your your point about breaking up like kind of the seriousness of it all and RPGs and the melodramatic. They just go together hand in hand. Uh so one of my examples I wanted to bring up, which I don't know if you played, have you played Bravely Second? Oh, yeah, I know which yeah. game you're talking about. You're talking about the uh, like the, 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 doll, the doll making. making. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, this is arguably better than the entire base game. But uh, it was just so dumb and different. But I like I loved it. And it was just it was so cute. And I think it's because, like you said, I could go from really serious dungeon, getting a new job class, blah, blah, blah. I almost died. And then like, oh, no, but look at this doll. It's worth 100,000 gil. And like that was just really exciting. And I think when you, when you get those moments, it really kind of clicks with like why you get the mini games in there and like why they can be fun. And then um, 
opposite inverse is true. So when they don't click, you're like, oh my God, why am I doing this? Yeah, and I think like kind of what I was saying about Final Fantasy 13, because obvi- I think I've made it my mission to talk about Final Fantasy 13 <laughs> yeah. in every, every, every episode. single episode this season. Yeah, it's a versatile um, game. But, uh, or is it? I think, mm. I don't think it is, which exactly. is what, but um, if I think of you know, mini games and their addition. Um, and if games need mini games to be good. Yeah. And I think the answer is honestly at this point, yes. Mm. I don't think that RPGs uh have like I don't think an RPG with the greatest combat system is a great game if it doesn't have those little escapes. Mm. Um I really do think it's important to have that because again you could have the most banger battle system and it could be so engaging and fun, Mm -hmm. but like, do you really want to have to do that for 30 more hours without anything else to do? Yeah. Yeah. Like final final fantasy 16. Didn't have have? mini games at all. I'm like going through, I just played it recently. I'm just going through everything again. It had like side quests, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. did it? I don't think it had any, I don't think it had any mini games and like, I think that's to its disservice. I think yeah. that many, mini games really like spice things up. So yeah, I, I do think that if, in order for a game to be good, it, like you said, it needs a variety um, and versatility. And that's one thing that they definitely add. Interesting. Yeah. I can agree with that too. I, I don't know if I would say a game is outwardly bad if it doesn't have a mini game. Like, I think it just it just always adds stuff. I feel like even if the okay, so if the sure yeah oh yeah, it's not like it's immediately right, bad, but right. I think it's one of those things that it kicks it up even further. Exactly, if it uh, has them. That's what I was gonna say. Like I think that as long as the mini game isn't a requirement and the requirement freaking sucks, I think if it's just there, like even if it's not fun, like you can just skip it. It can only add to the experience. So I feel like sure. ha- having them just bolsters the whole game up to be like, oh yeah, and witcher 3 has gwent and you're like wow great and it's just so much more stuff that you can do and then again just, i want i want i do want to talk about that yeah but. exactly and it just adds it adds to the gameplay uh overall and it just makes you feel more maybe invested in the world which is cool and kind of unique to rpgs by the way and uh yeah it's just it, it's neat when it when it works it's, it really works well what do you think goes into a good design for a mini game like if we're specifically talking about on a general level, what makes them good? Uh, well, like good art assets, the coding needs to be solid. Uh, the development team needs to have a great idea. Those things. I'm joking, of course. Uh, <laughs> what you're, the fuck you're is like, your what? answer? <laughs> uh, what goes into a good one? Um, I think it's something that has a bit of passion behind it. So it needs to be something that uh, the developers or the team, whomever, are thinking like, what does this add to the world? And why would it be here? Like um, we've kind of. I think danced. that's a good point. I want to I want to touch on that too because I mm-hmm. agree. And you know, this kind of touches on the what you were saying a little bit for Bravely Default. I think it's better when it's ingrained in the world context. And I think that's yeah. kind of what you're you're saying. Like if it mm-hmm. naturally is like this is something that people do here, mm-hmm. solidly it it just like has a specialness to it. So definitely that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I I that's what I was getting at. And it just it makes so much sense when you look at um. I hope it's the game I was talking about. Well, uh, when you look at the Final Fantasy eight and nine and they have Triple Triad and Tetra Master, mm-hmm. like they have a, a card game. Like, of course they do, because we have card games. You keep picking on Final Fantasy in seven. They have Chocobo Racing. And I think even in like 11 and the other ones, too, 14. Uh, and yeah, it makes sense. You have these bipedal birds that can go fast like you would race them. So like it, it draws a little bit of what is in my real world into this fantasy one. And it, it, it makes sense and it expands upon it. And those are those are the ones that stick out most to to be a good one to me. I would say the ones that aren't overly complicated is oh, kind sure. of what makes it sure. good. Um, and if, like a fun hooks, you know, like I, it can't just be like here is an activity. It definitely needs to be a fun activity. I yeah. don't want to do a mini quest or sorry, a mini game just to getting a, a reward so we're talking fun. about pokemon slot machines uh, right, exactly exactly yeah. like the slot machines are a mini game and i to the bane of dragon quest i think that's one of the things that it doesn't do well um you, anytime mm-hmm. you have to go to the casino it's it's not fun yeah um yeah. and there's a lot of like 
loading and reloading and reloading just yeah. to win. And there's like um, good shit that you want to get. Yeah, and exactly. I'm like, oh, I got to get that sword. And, and that's so and that's what I was kind of like one of the points I had too is like rewards needs to be reasonable. Like, reasonable is good. Yeah. I also don't like uh, mini games that have a lot of high pressure. I think one of the things that really goes into a good design ones is when they're a little bit more cozy and okay. not that there can't be like some kind of pressure to succeed or win, but I don't want it to be like the most obscene like anxiety ridden mini game mm-hmm. where it, um, i'm not enjoying it you know what i mean like it's super intense like when you and i were imagine the intensity level of you and i streaming uh returnal of that boss that we were just fighting on mm-hmm. stream mm-hmm like and how intense that was imagine like if you yeah. encompass that as a mini game like i would not enjoy that mini game <laughs> so i think they, i think they need to have like a certain level of of coziness to it too so like if if mario kart just burst out into a bullet hell for some reason you're like what yeah. is happening like why is this here <laughs> exactly exactly yeah so you bring up um returnal which is a super new game and it- there hasn't been a mini game in there that I've seen yet, but also uh, not an RPG, but. also not an RPG really. Uh, but we have talked about multiple generations of games so far. Um, game systems, I should say. Uh, have you seen Patrick, any change from those earlier ones to the modern ones going from your chrono triggers up to your final fantasy 16s? I think, uh, a lot of newer mini games. I want to say a lot of them, some of them, kind of like what i was just saying um with the intensity Mm -hmm. uh there's a lot of overly complicated systems you're telling me (laughs) i won't necessarily jump into a mini game if it has a lot of things going on not that i can't understand it but like if a game especially jrpgs have these really intricate battle systems themselves yeah and then i have to learn a completely new system just to engage in a mini game I'm completely turned off to that, right? You, you know yeah. what I mean? And I don't okay. think older RPGs had that. Like, we're talking about um, Super Mario RPG where you're falling down a waterfall and you're just collecting... <laughs> go left as or right. Ma- yeah. yeah, go get as many coins as you can. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just fun. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's so easy and streamlined and clear. I think that mini games honestly, have gotten a little worse as time went on. And okay. I just wonder if it's because the variety of wackiness has like gone away so you mentioned oh, Mario. You, you think they're them being less wacky as a as a problem well wacky maybe is a weird word so i think that when i'm looking at the older ones i feel like yeah mario rpg yeah left and right on the the waterfall but like the the yoshi racing was a little bit weird and different um and games that had mini games with them like like tetra master and your um Final Fantasy VII snowboarding were just off the wall and really strange. And like when I jump to the newer games, it seems like they maybe take less silliness or less risks with those. And maybe they're more ingrained in like what the world is supposed to be. So there's just like racing and that's that's fine. But like I I think it's it's cool when you do get something like we could bring Bravely Second again and like, you know, doll making like it's just really, really random. Um, and maybe that's me not playing a lot of games these days and I played more back then. So it's a little bit skewed, but I just don't see them sticking around in my mind as long to be like, this is really fun and exciting. And it makes me just think that the, the wonder years were back in the nineties when it might've been a bit more interesting to me. I I'm happy that you and I have differing opinions on this. I know sometimes we agree, but I'm the opposite. Mm -hmm. Um, so if we had to like break down, two different types of mini games we could call them like the high fantasy mini games Mm -hmm. that are those ones where maybe they don't fit the plot or maybe they're like this really wild concept where in bravely default 2 you know we're talking about how you have this mini game where you're literally just like sewing dolls and trying to make the most profitable dolls as possible or not bravely default 2 uh bravely Bravely second Second. Mm -hmm. um versus those ones that are a little bit more realistic that are in the context of the world like a card game like in final fantasy 8 or bravely default 2 has a card game mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or having like a, a fishing mini game oh or yeah something fishing like games. that mm-hmm. i personally like the like more realistic context fitting yeah. ones more because of that um because i don't want to do one where like you're this really like highly designed anime character who's on this mission to save the world 
but you have a mini game where you're break dancing. I mean, I would play you know, the shit out of that. <laughs> like, I think I mean, that would be fun. <laughs> I'm not saying like it's not fun. Yeah, and sure, I wouldn't. Sure. I would not say that. But like personally, I'm just like, what is this okay. add? <laughs> yeah, like what? What is this adding? Mm-hmm. So, Final Fantasy VII remake um, has a squatting mini game and a pull up mini game, and it's kind of similar to I think what you have to do in order to get the one of the items to get into the mansion and disc one and the regular final fantasy seven, mm-hmm. but they like made it, you could do it a couple different times for a couple different re- rewards and you unlock more levels of difficulty and it's very bro and whatnot. And I actually <laughs> really like it because you go to this gym and cloud is known as a bro. So if someone yeah. challenges him to like squats or I think Tifa can also do the, I think Tifa might actually be the person who does the pull-ups I, I it's been a little bit for that game but like regardless they like throw it, down when they're they athletic <laughs> yeah they're athletic characters like it fits what they're doing it's not like Aerith, who is not an athletic character <laughs> starts is, doing the pull-ups starts doing pull-ups and not that like not that that would be bad or anything like that mm. but it fits it fits the character of tifa yeah. a lot more it fits the character of cloud a lot more and i think yeah. that's what i like like if your character it narratively is, aligns could you imagine if so a game like Tales of Symphonia had a high intelligence um mini game like a card based game and you're mm-hmm. playing as Lloyd and <laughs> Lloyd ha- like w- like s- slaughters all of these yeah. people in a card based mini game it do- it wouldn't make sense it doesn't fit that character yeah. this, the, these people who are probably super high IQ people and this person now if, maybe if you're playing a game like a Oh, what's it called? Um, in Fallout New Vegas, you know, and you get to generate your own character oh, and you're playing a game yeah. like Caravan, Caravan, you know, like which a lot of people rip on that game. I love that game. It's just a card game. Caravan like, what's is, wrong with that game? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I, I, so the rules are kind of that is a complicated one. Like, yeah, I think yeah. once once you get it, you get it. But like Caravan is kind of an odd game. But again, like it it fits the narrative of the game you know mm-hmm. you it's not always just going to be gambling at roulette or poker yeah. and whatnot so yeah it's new vegas so you get new games in new vegas i mean it's in the title people so you say that you land more in the high fantasy mini games is there, like are there any mini games that are in that realm aside from bravely second that you really liked um were there any other ones i mean the the big ones are all the card games so like i definitely liked um well i wouldn't say those would be the high fantasy ones what do you mean so uh those would be the more realistic ones i think the high fantasy mini games would be like you have a you're doing a massage for a character like i think no final fantasy 10 2 there's this massage mini game where you have to massage this character's back i mean like those ones yeah so those ones i think I think I like the gaminess of that, where it seems like this is so absurd and wild. It just makes me laugh and smile. I think that's what I like about them. But are they good? Like, are they good games, like fun to play? Probably not. And they might not offer a lot. So I think it's I'm really torn because I think if I needed to pick like, you know, I have to decide today which I want to keep and get rid of. I would rather probably keep the ones that are fun to play so your your card games your your good racing type of games and the I'd more get, realistic the ones. realistic ones and then i would get rid of the silly ones and i think also for your reason too it, it is better world building when they make sense like uh, cloud lifting iron and all that but well you know. so you you may not know this either because i know you haven't played seven remake mm-hmm. but there is basically um on the opposite side uh a um ddr-esque like dancing mini game scene where you do the button and points as cloud is dancing and whatnot and you you know it's just like oh it's it's like playing did you play kingdom hearts 2 Mm -hmm. in atlantis and um you oh, basically like, the, 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 like it's like yeah, rapper the rapper mm-hmm. like you have to do the button inputs yeah. but it's like a musical and whatnot like but hopefully that, good <laughs> it's like it's silly and final fantasy 7 remake has something like that too where like again i like those games if you like them cool like you are 100 mm-hmm. percent valid in liking them but like i think what you're saying is too if you had to choose one of the two yeah. the ones that fit the context more because thinking of cloud like lifting weight versus thinking of cloud dancing it doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily make as much sense but at least you yeah, see him being comfortable when he's doing it yeah <laughs> he's popping off that's good oh yeah popping off um i also really like it when games have games inside of them the framework um, game 
Yeah. So they're like Fallout uh, 4 has on your Pip Boy, you can play a couple of arcade yeah. games, which are fun. But one of the newer games, and it's an indie game called Eastward. Um, oh, I've seen that. Yeah. One of my friends. I love that. it. I love it so much. It's kind of like playing a game in the world of Adventure Time, but not <laughs> any of the characters and whatnot. It has that kind of like wackiness to it yeah yeah something wild happens to the world but it has all the whimsy but Mm -hmm. you can um go to an arcade and there is a full roguelike dragon quest game in it Mm. and like literally you can just tap out of the main adventure and completely i think it's called like earthborn or something like that and just play that instead and play this turn-based rpg roguelike like our very old arcade style and do that instead of the main narrative and like that's it's a really fun mini game and there's no real purpose for doing it yeah just it's just funsies it fun. yeah that's awesome that, that's reminding me of uh one of our cousins he really likes the yakuza series which i guess is technically rpgs and um there are many oh, games yeah, yeah. I, w- <laughs> I would say the let I me mean, at least like like a dragon is at least yeah RPG. yeah that's more even more turn-based some of those games literally just have Sega branded arcades. So you could just straight up go and play like Outrun, like in the arcade. And I'm like, that's not really a mini game, but it's kind of a mini game in the context of the world. But yeah, I see what you're saying. The game within a game is great. And I have to give a shout out to Ge- Geometry Wars. Have you played that one? I know the game. Yeah. Yeah. That one started as I think it was like Gotham City Racing. It was like a random game you could get there. And then it just became better than that entire game that spawned it, which I think is just wild. Weird. Anyways, side, side story over. Like, can you? I can't imagine being a game developer and like having this incredible game, but then have to think about, oh god! But now I need to fill it up. Yeah, what are the other games we're other shit. we're gonna throw in here? Yeah. Well, Crazy. I think you bring up a good. I think you bring up a good point. Like, when mini games are like tied into the story, I think it it can go one of two ways, and and I would want to hear your thoughts, but I think that it could be something where like if it works narratively and you have to do it as part of like this quest line, it could be great. But I think that if it's just um, something that you just dread doing, dread doing, it's just no fun at all. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Like, should, should there be a connection? Like, should you be forced to play the game? How long should it go? What, so what's happening? Prime there? examples for this. And there are a lot of RPGs that have yeah. there, breath of fire three and breath of fire four um, notoriously gate progress behind mm-hmm. mini games. Like you, you have to do them. So um, I haven't played it, all of three, but is the one you're talking about where you get that guy to be like stronger? Is that what you're thinking of? That is an example. Okay, of, I didn't. That's actually when I sure. stopped playing because I was like, it's slow. <laughs> so I, I think there are two examples of it. You have the ones like in um, Super Mario RPG where you're going down the waterfall. Mm. And even if you suck at it, when you especially when you get to the barrel jumping part at the end, like it's you still, still progress, mm-hmm. yeah. you still progress, like no matter what. Or um, when you're chasing. Um, what's his name up the hill the the warrior oh, booster. knockoff booster yeah. up the hill and you have the three shy guys and you jump on their head and every time you touch the princess you get right it's either a flower or a frog queen it's like one of the two yeah. um the, the, you still pass mm-hmm. like you still you still pass the game no matter what but a breath of fire three and four there are so many of them Mm -hmm. that they completely gate the narrative and some of them are like really fun but some of them aren't um like the ones that aren't fun breath of fire 4 has like hide and seek one that's not great or breath of fire 3 has you have to get all the ingredients to make basically sashimi for this one guy and you can't progress through the quest unless you do and you have to go to like four different places to get the ingredients for it and then you have to make the sashimi right so if you fuck it up you have <laughs> to start over <laughs> and get everything again and the like instructions especially like i played it as a kid yeah. i couldn't i struggled with that badly now when i played it again three years ago Ace i still struggle it no okay <laughs> no no Ace, Ace it like i got it a lot more but like it was very much like well depending on how much vinegar you use Mm. Uh, you need to make sure that you use as much rice and you need to make sure you balance all that vinegar with this much horseradish. So it's so literally cooking it was sushi. Basi- <laughs> it was an algebra problem, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Equal but one, that's what you need to do. <laughs> the Breath of Fire games also have some fun ones. Like there's this really fun crane game in Breath of Fire 4 where like mm. you're literally just taking boxes and loading them onto this boat. And like the better you do, you get a reward, which is fun. Uh, mm. you're, you're basically still passing anyways. Or this really cool one in three you're on this tanker 
and these two like squid like bosses pop up out of the ocean Mm -hmm. and you play basically red light green light with them backing up it because you want to get toward the front of the tanker where the cannons are okay and if you do these cannons will shoot them and battle and do extra damage but if you don't do it, you still battle them and like you can still completely succeed. It's you just, just don't have the advantage. Extra, yeah. yeah, a little extra advantage. And I really appreciated that because it adds so much more. But let me mm-hmm. like it's like it irks me when a mini game is not fun and you have to do it. Yeah, I can. And, I can. And you have to succeed. Like not just you have to do it. You have to succeed. Yeah, I can feel that, too. Um, I think that. OK, you have to remind me, what is the name of the guy from Breath of Fire 3? is it bade oh that might be right and you're in that i know you're in that seed side town um yeah yeah, which was cool great music yeah Yeah, that's it exactly exactly and like the idea of that game is fine like it makes sense narratively like we talked about which is good uh and you have to get across the bridge to the next island which is smart like this is here it's silly because like you're doing it to get access to the lighthouse the lighthouse yeah it's across like a bridge but you're really just doing it so bade can get can impress laid. some woman yeah, yeah bade like gets it's... laid there you go <laughs> it, and it's just it's so weird and I, I mentioned earlier like i literally just stopped playing because i was like this is so slow and i i mean that like literally and figuratively like it is literally a slow grind and the PlayStation one is so slow at loading so that slow. game. Well, and Breath of Fire three is notoriously. Yeah, yeah you told me, you told loading. me. Yeah. And I was like, hot damn. Uh, and then it's just, it's just a slow progress. And like, you don't really see a lot of like, what will this do for you? Like, I guess I need to attack myself so that you don't die first round. And it, it like the strategy is there, but it's just kind of like, why do I have to do this? Like, I, can I just like fly over or is there another way to like progress the story? It's, uh, it just really, really works. Why can't, why can't we just shoot the door to the lighthouse? Open? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, I, I get, I get it. Like sometimes that can be a really cute palate cleanse. Like we were talking about earlier. I don't mind that quest so much because mm-hmm. I do think it's like funny training this one, like, typically nerdy guy in this basic mo- yeah. montage um and like the different things that you can do to help him like you can you can heal him in battle so you can k- keep the battle going longer yeah you buy his equipment for him so you equip him and i know like the better you, you do the better rewards you get and then he, when he actually faces against the bully there are times the bully's not looking so you can cast healing spells or buff mm-hmm. spells on y- your guy to help support him but at the same time, like if you just want to proceed with the game, yeah, like why why is this this big of a hoop? You know, exactly. like again, if it, if it's one of those things where uh, Blitzball, for example, like the one match of Blitzball that you have to play, it's yeah. basically intended that you get slaughtered. Like you really have to know what you're doing to win that so game, win. and you you can like you have to make sure that Titus gets enough uh, like of a level up in the first round to learn Jack Shot. Mm-hmm. um or to have enough hp for a check shot or whatever um but like if you don't win it's not a big deal you just don't get a couple sphere grid or sphere yeah. excuse for your sphere grid like it's it's not like it's a game over so it's it's frustrating it's silly game design but on that note we're gonna take a quick break and we'll <laughs> yeah. be right back <laughs> Okay, we are back. Glad you are all still here. We're talking about RPG mini games, and we've kind of discussed like the games themselves and the games that come from them in these mini games. But what about a game that might just actually be one big ass mini game? Like, are there th- <laughs> these types of games exist? I know I have one in mind, but I want to hear what what you're thinking too. So I have two that I come to mind quickly. I mean, mm. just quick thinking of your question. Um, Rogue Galaxy for the PS2. Oh, I think is- that's a mini game one of them it's basically yeah yeah, i mean so the reason why is Mm -hmm. because there are so many mini games yeah uh in the game that like you basically stop playing the game to do them yeah that's a good point i guess you don't always fight Uh, people right um and nino kuni 2 is also like there's a massive castle sim in the game so basically you're spending a lot of time doing that. 
Okay. I have a feeling you're going to say Yakuza, right? <laughs> Yakuza is one of them, but no, I, I wanted to talk about fantasy life. And I think, oh, duh, yeah, that is basically min- min- entirely well, a minigame. It, yeah, and I feel like there's an asterisk because like it is like it's the- hard because I like it's almost like it's more sim than minigame. And it, right. I, I, like, I, I, I agree with you. Like, at what point is the line uh, yeah, at what, what point sim in an RPG? But like in that game, we've talked about it a few times uh-huh. on the channel, right? Like, I think the reason why I would still include it here is because you the the minigame aspect of the lives you choose are always like secondary to something you're doing to attack people so like yeah you might be going into like fish in the lava area but like you're also mainly like going to attack people with swords and shields and magic and so like the mini game is a little bit separate but really more so the ones that stick out are the truly unique ones that are like button presses and mashes and rhythm games for like cooking and tailor and all that jazz i think they just stand out as like the, the entire game is just doing this and then you you feed that into I go out, I slash things, I get more linens and bobs and stuff, and I come back and I do it again. Um, and it's great. Did you like, know the funny fun. thing? Yeah. This is a point that I think I was going to make. Um, all three of these games are mm. level five games. Wait, Rogue Galaxy is level five? Yeah, Wait. I'm pretty sure oh, Rogue shit. Galaxy, it's in, like made by level five. Dang. And I know you know, Kuni is. And so that my point <laughs> was going to be like... <laughs> like uh level five sometimes it's very hit uh-huh. and sometimes it's very miss but like they do so many mini games in okay. games like they they so also were this is, this is eight this is the time where i bring up i wanted it it's not really an rpg but i like some of the mini games in the professor Layton series which is also level five right like i think yeah. i think they're level <laughs> like they're mini game masters because that, yeah. that's kind of how i feel about it we're like I think Rogue Galaxy is fine because there are some mini games that like don't bog down the experience, though. Like you, you can mm-hmm. get stuck in it, but like the, the game is still snappy enough to get through. And some of the mini games are hella fun. But sure. like in Nino Kuni 2, the story is not great. The combat, like if you don't put it on the harder difficulties, I, I kid you not. I put the game down when we first got it because I could stand there and just hit the attack button and not dodge. And I mm. swear to you, I killed tank 50% everything. of the bosses because they just didn't. I did too much damage. They didn't do enough. So I came Damn. back later when they added more difficulty to the game <laughs> because I think a lot of people were saying that. Um, yeah, I, I, there's something about level five in mini games, and like it's kind of exciting because I think they do it well. And I, like mm-hmm. I, they're kind of the reason why Dragon Quest eight had this like wonder wonderfully like whimsical vibe to it in the in the 3d space versus Mm -hmm. dragon quest 7 and you know you have the really cute um dragon uh the bingo game and whatnot and you have the crafting which i don't think crafting is a mini game but like you know there's there were a lot like i think they're masters of the mini game element is what i'm trying to say yeah and like to clarify the non-rpg um professor layton series like yeah those games are all mini games like like they're brain teasers but actually what i mean is every game has like a separate game in it like each one is different sometimes it's like um rearranging your room and getting new letters that explore the the background of the characters that you're in or the characters in the world that you're playing and then sometimes you get i think it's the fourth or fifth game you get london life which is like legitimately an entirely separate rpg that's just there for the beginning and it's it's totally different completely its own game and it's like what what are they doing why is this not a completely different game like it could be its own thing it's it's just it's wild like what they add to this yeah looking at the list of things they've done i feel like you and i just like cracked the code on, <laughs> you heard it here on, folks. heard it here first. On, on mini games and whatnot and mm-hmm. uh and who does it because they you know they did uh dark cloud oh yeah that was theirs which oh that, is, i mean that's essentially a mini very, game okay, yeah, yeah exactly and like you you can see their. i mean we should do an episode on them you can see their dna mm-hmm. in, in all their games <laughs> a, 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 a lot of different games like you can oh, look at five. and say there that you go. yeah yeah Pra- nice. praise level five um r.i.p i guess though right uh, well layton's coming back at least that's good oh yeah i guess we have that new fantasy life coming up soon too yeah yeah which will also be mini game of the game okay yeah. <laughs> anyways back back on our our actual discussion back on track. um what type this is super important obviously um <laughs> i i know the answer for you already oh, but okay. i'm gonna i'm gonna ask it anyway um what is your favorite type of mini game in it like if you had to do like base type of game what is your favorite style of mini game 
Um, I mean, obviously it's card games. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, I, think, I, <laughs> I love figure. card games. But is, uh, is there? Let's get to that. But is there anything yeah. else? Yeah, if I had to pick something else, I do kind of like the the dexterity game. So like like a rhythm game in a sense. Okay. I think that comes from me liking DDR and growing up on that and just rhythm games in general. So when they come in, it's it's fun. And we were just talking about level five and fantasy life. I mean, kind of the same. There's like a slider. You hit it in rhythm. You do better. That's good. You mentioned FF7 remake and there's like a mini dancing game. That's those are the ones that stick. Or out I mean, I like the, the pull up and uh, squat ones, like they're ba- basically rhythm games, too. Like you have to hit yeah. the buttons at the right times and the right combinations in order to do it. So yeah, it's yeah. not quite quite to the same level as like Parappa the Rappa or anything like that. But right. I just I think that um, outside of card games, that rhythm style, I think it's just so basic in what it is. You can adapt like a lot of stuff into that type of mini game. I mean, there's an entire series of basically every persona that is a dancing game. And I think it just kind of works. And like you, I don't know, they just they work for me, too. So those are the ones that stick out to me the most. See, I don't mind that in the sense there because it's something separate. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, oh, it's not in the game. It's a separate game for the person. Right. Yeah. So I do want to talk about card games. I do, uh, yeah. but for me fishing games like i always love Boo, them fishing. i think i know I, I, it's funny when we brought that up in our discord people would be like yeah but it has that stupid fishing game which comes yep. up a lot yep. and i <laughs> i like them because i think that's just like such a cozy element mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um in games. okay well then i need to ask you favorite fishing game like which game had the best one? Oh, uh, probably breath of fire 3 <sighs> i i i really like it in that game i think it's a lot of fun it was Mm. a lot of trial and error of using the different lures and whatnot and honestly did you know that it has a rhythm game to it too oh like the way that you tap and you yeah the way you tap and you reel in and like it gives you like a a bonus to like you attracting a fish and some of like the larger fishes you won't uh larger fish you won't catch if you don't do it a certain way but well i will the, i will the uh, good i sorry i will allow you to to like breath of fire 3 because i think it is unique it's better than like i don't know zelda's and you kind of just throw it out and reel it in and, like that's all it is and it's better than like pokemon where you just hit a button and it comes in well yeah because i mean a lot of those games too it's like you get to do something with this mini game where right in, exactly in zelda it's like hopefully you get the big fish where in at right. least breath of fire, like there are rewards that you can get depending yeah. on what fish and how many and whatnot. Um, but I think like, yeah, just like you card games, mm-hmm. I love them so much. Anytime uh, there's a card game, uh, I'm all about and, it. So, uh, bravely default to you. I know I, I got shit on our uh, Instagram when I posted about liking that card game, but whoever the fuck you are, I don't fucking care. I like that game. It's fun. <laughs> Uh, oh wow making enemies uh you know like triple triad and tetra yeah. master bug fables has their card game oh they it's, did have a card game that's right yeah i like it was so surprising how much fun mm-hmm. that one was like they're, they don't always have to be on the heavy level of uh what's the game you like um magic slay slay the spire like oh, slay, yeah they, yeah mm-hmm. they, they don't have to be like the the peak card game or anything Mm -hmm. like that but just to have that little diversion in the story and like like we've talked about so far i think the best thing to think about is that you can this is a game that exists in the world like Mm -hmm. um more so on the deck builder space because i wouldn't say this about caravan even though you can technically build your deck um there's something special about having those like unique character the character cards cards. i have a feeling your ultimate game though is probably gonna be gwent it's not Gwent. I didn't I didn't play a lot of actually I've never really played The Witcher all that much, but I did play <gasps> Gwent and Gwent became its own thing, which is incredible. Yeah, it's literally its uh, own game. Yeah. Um no, I think that the the card game that sticks out most is is Tetra Master. I think I like that one. That's Final Fantasy IX slash eleven, by the way. It came out on so Final you Fantasy like- eleven. You like that more than Triple Triad? I do, and I think it's because Triple Triad is probably the better game. Like, if I'm looking at what game has better mechanics that work, I think it's Triple Triad. But I think the the random. So, fun- so are you saying you like nine more? So Tetra Master wins. Is that what you just said? Uh, Tetra Master wins, and I, I think it wins because nine. It's a little more serious, in my opinion, and it, it's the overall like better structured game. I think it's it's slightly different than Tetra Master, and I think it's more structured okay. uh, <laughs> but i think tetra master is just fun and it's it's fun to collect the cards it's fun to battle people you can just hit square and see if you can get someone to do it i just i like that and it's definitely nostalgia goggles like looking back on it if i had to sit down and see which one's better i'm sure i might have a different opinion 
but that's kind of where I land on that one. I think Triple Triad is 100% the better game. I think the mm-hmm. only thing that holds Triple Triad back is if you accidentally like get struck with the randomizer uh, rule and mm-hmm. then you like can't get rid you of can't, it. You can't like, actually, you can't, yeah. You can't choose your cards. I think that is one of the few times where it, it sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, but aside from that, like structurally, I think it the rules are a lot more clear because yeah. I know that there were times where I would play Tetra Master and it would be difficult to tell what beats what. Yeah, based you didn't on, even like, know. Wasn't <clears throat> there like hidden there, there, rules too? <laughs> so like if you read a guide on it, it's very clear and the, the game does not do the greatest job of explaining what beats what like this is a magic card this is a physical card and like what do these numbers mean it's not really that clear but i think triple triad is 100 percent clear and the way that things can like combo with each other i think it's good Mm -hmm. it's not an rpg but um shovel knight um king knight Mm -hmm. uh basically combined the two games and made it like that is basically you still go through levels and adventure and whatnot but you participate in a lot of uh card battles too which is a lot of fun so if you're not an rpg but if you're looking for something fun that's similar to both those that that's a good one okay aside from you being wrong about (laughs) wow master and triple triad being the best like of the card games and being the favorite and whatnot uh-huh. what are your other favorites for mini games other favorites um i don't know if it's a favorite because i liked it <laughs> or because i i completed it but i did enjoy seventh chocobo racing only because okay. you got what was the materia oh knights of the round knights right it's knights okay yeah you got knights of the round and i felt like um sorry and so I it's felt your, that it's, it's your favorite because it's my favorite because I think the satisfaction afterward, I was like, okay. I got got that gold chocobo. I put in the work. I did the race. I got the materia. I beat Sephiroth. And like, so that felt really cool. I didn't have to do any of those. Well, I have to beat Sephiroth, I guess. But I didn't have to do any of these other steps. And it just felt like this was rewarding and fun. And I remember doing the extra work to look at the guide and to see like, what do I need? What? two chocobos make what colored egg whatever it is and making that research and then seeing the project or the product at the end being really satisfying and so that that one stands out as like a a non card game that really was was kind of fun one of my favorites is also a chocobo mini game do you know which one it is uh oh god i don't know is there a not a is there it's not a racing game i'm assuming it is not a racing game it's from final fantasy 9 do you remember it oh shit um chocobo hot and cold hot is, cold oh the, the where you're my, you're poking around in the world right yeah <laughs> might be Quit. might be my favorite mini game period nice the end why like the, okay so like <laughs> okay <laughs> first of all the 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 anticipation of Patrick getting just closer, cracked his knuckles and like here we go so. <laughs> yeah, of getting closer and closer to something mm, like you said mm, the mm, quet mm. quet and mm-hmm. like how the quests get louder and yeah. louder and like saying it as you're playing that is a lot of fun yeah. um and collecting as much and being like oh i got four treasures i get 15 more seconds sure it's not just that though it's the fact that you get the maps to explore the world and unlock mm-hmm. other pieces of equipment. Yeah. So it, it has, it not, has relevance. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's not just like the context of the mini game itself, but like it, it's how it makes you go back and explore the world. And like the, the mini game of being on the map and like trying to match up the picture and listen to the clues of where yeah. the chest is buried. I yeah. think it's just packaged really well because here you might have this like, okay, Chocobo hot and cold is Moogle's bearing a bunch of things. <laughs> it could be really silly, but I think it brings it back kind of like the card games into sure. no, but there's actually buried treasure here that you can go and find. And I think that is one of the reasons why it's just like a peak mini game. Like I, one of the reasons to go back and play final fantasy nine is just, just for that game. Okay, I have two follow-ups, and one's relevant. Have you played Dragon Quest Treasures? No. Okay, it is literally it's, just Chocobo Hot yeah, Cold the entire a, time. It's it really, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's cute and fun, by the way, so you should look into it. I think it's on sale right now. Uh, but my second one, I wanted to throw it back a little bit, too, for a mini game that stood out that I don't know if it's a mini game in the most strict sense, but I'm thinking of Pokemon's Safari Zone as kind of a mini game. 
and that was uh, see it's not quite yeah okay yeah <laughs> I, I i think it is because it's not like mm-hmm. the standard mechanic and yeah. it's an optional place that you can go to it's not like you're just battling i i, I think it's a mini game I think it's it mini fits. game it's mini game esque. it's not the yeah. most drastic departure but i think the reason why it stood out to me as another really fun one was you just got a ton of new shit when you're in the safari zone and you're like oh cool magikarps and all this stuff and then you're like Kangaskhan and like all these random things show up and it was just so incredible and I think it's again maybe from being a kid at the time but having watched the cartoon and seeing these things and then then they're in the game I'm like oh cool now I finally see it and it's this neat way I have to pay to get in I have to use these special pokeballs it was well, it, it kind was of really pairs fun. down the experience in a way like honestly I almost wish that I think one thing that Arceus did really well was mm-hmm. you don't have to battle to catch yeah. And I think like that's kind of a cool thought where like maybe you only battle to train and you only battle to battle other trainers and whatnot, but you don't battle to catch Pokemon. Like what are the other resources that you mm-hmm. can use to catch something? And, you know, you get to throw a rock at a Pokemon in uh, the Safari Zone and there are yeah. a couple of their other options. And like, yeah, it's kind of random and a little janky, but there is some excitement to it because you're not like, I'm just going to put you to sleep and whip ultra balls at you until you, you right, pop in. Right. It, there's so, just something else a little bit more. We'll do a quick, like quick math question then. So how long was it from the Safari Zone to Pokemon Arceus? How many years before Nintendo changed that method for how you play Pokemon? 20, oh 20, God, 20 25 like, years. And they thought like, maybe yeah. we could change it now. Oh my wow. gosh. Um, I would say for me, the final favorite mini game that I have, um, anytime that you get some kind of extra monster collection in a game and you get to do something with it. Uh, mm. Did you play Rogue Galaxy? Uh, I never beat it, but I played it on PS2. So uh, Rogue Galaxy has Insectron. Do you remember okay. that mini game? Yes, yes. It's mm-hmm. it's the, you get to catch all the like little bugs, the bugs. and then mm. have them fight. And it's a tactics game and like it's a completely different way to play the game and you can participate in the tournaments it's very similar to dragon quest 8 and taking your monsters to the the coliseum you know okay. and just having them duke it out and i just really like that because you know here is basically an rpg and an rpg mm-hmm. um yeah. and you could get, get to build your like little party and just kind of see it from a different perspective and it's it's just it's cute thinking of these like i have these little bugs and there's this epic battle going on <laughs> with all these things that these bugs can do um Man, and they're just level five really down. really pulling through i didn't even make yeah, those they, connections they, they, again <laughs> level five uh mini game the game like mini game the game <laughs> they, they are going to rebrand big. themselves yeah that's what they're going to be called um one thing i want to talk about in terms of these games to uh these mini games is and you kind of talked about this when you were talking about why you love chocobo racing so much is the reward you get is typically mm. something epic tier like yeah. ultimate weapons ultimate armor ultimate spells do you think mini games should always have these rewards uh yes i think i think there should be something to like play through it and I, I'm sure we can probably both agree on this one where the, it should not be a requirement to play through the game because F that. I think it's it's dumb to make you have to go through it all the way. Uh, well, it's, I, it's definitely optional, though, because like, we're <laughs> just talking about I'm doing this mini game to get Ultima Weapon, you know, or right. something like that. Not like I'm doing this mini game because it is the barrier to progress the plot. Exactly. As long as it's not the barrier for the plot, it's OK. Final or Dragon Quest three or no breath of fire three uh but i think um yeah when there's like when you dodge the lightning bolts and you get whatever ultimate weapon like cool like that's that's fun um and i think it's it's good when like that weapon or item whatever it is is not necessary to like do something and i and i even mean to do like um some of the side quests so maybe if you think like you need all of the ultimate weapons to beat like i don't know um emerald or ruby from seven um like do you like maybe maybe you don't so when it when it becomes no longer a game and it becomes like you're forced to do this like this tedium to make something in the game accessible i don't like that but i think the idea of having a reward to entice players is totally fine see i think uh it depends on what the mini game is i think the reward needs to fit the mini game okay. i don't think it makes sense if you are dancing 
and you get this ultimate materia or like <laughs> here's for example, a massive new gun and you're like oh cool <laughs> for example if i give one whale three spearfish and one brandy to uh the gobi merchants in <laughs> breath of fire 3 yeah. i can get the ultimate sword that that's is all he needed <laughs> silly unlike that's not even really that hard to do and mm-hmm. you can get it relatively early I wow. just like why why is me trading in fish gonna what's, get me this what's like, the connection to this best item yeah so like if it's like well if you do this fishing or if you do this cooking no but like if it's something like chocobo hot and cold where I have this treasure map and this is like yeah buried treasure of like epicness and it has this crazy loot inside of it yeah that makes sense or it's themed if I'm, well mm-hmm. if i'm fighting yeah themed well if i'm fighting to get ultimate weapon ultimate armor the, it would make sense like oh you're doing this like tournaments yeah if you mm-hmm. win a tournament you're gonna get like a really cool sword that makes that makes sense to me so i think it just depends on mm. where the ultimate equipment is is coming from it's a good point yeah i would agree with that too i think when it's when it's like silly like that breath of fire example you gave like i'm gonna do it because like min maxing that's the right thing to do but yeah like does it make sense and then like you know you lose kind of the whimsy of especially like a a early dragon quest or next town new items and you buy the next ones you upgrade if you have it so early or whatnot you already have the big one it's kind of you lose that that fun aspect okay so we've talked about the good we talked about kind of some of the bad and we talked about everything kind of in the middle but we haven't talked about like the notoriously really bad mini games in rpgs um do any of this come to mind patrick and when you're thinking of them how do you think you can make it any better okay so you brought it up already but i'm gonna like i don't know if i agree with you whether you completed this or not um i think dodging lightning bolts is the (laughs) stupidest fucking thing oh i'm sorry in the world like it is just the dumbest mini game like why 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 Mm -hmm. why? Um, (laughs) how would you make it better (laughs) the fact that you could you can literally just full-on fail Mm -hmm. um like 200 yeah Yeah. like you're not only so i don't think for a mini game you should have to dedicate that much time in one run to succeed you know if it is it is a lot a lot Mm -hmm. of a lot of mini games especially if you're going for ultimate loot tend to be progression based like even blitz ball is progression based right like you go through a full um season and then the big gear changes around and whatnot so for i think for lightning dodging in final fantasy 10 Mm -hmm. i would make it just cumulative i think that's just the easy way to do it like you don't have to get 200 in a row you just have to dodge 200 because 200 can you eventually can you imagine spending it's not like there's lightning bolts and lightning bolts in the entire game like it's just in that one area so like do i really yeah, want to have this? and you have to load it up like no encounters uh making sure that you're hitting that like one spot where you know it's going to trigger every time and making sure you're doing it correctly like no that's not fun that, that's mm-hmm. that's not respecting players time at all that's a good point yeah respecting time is smart as you were talking i was thinking uh the the cumulative aspect you gave of jumping the bolts is smart it's making me think of like how you collect the frog coins from mario like it's not really a mini game but like you get them eventually and then you start to see like oh cool i can get this big item um that makes sense so for me i have one general and then one specific uh sure. the general one i don't like fishing mini games i think ah! that they're, not, they're not the greatest i know you mentioned earlier although i will admit the the example from breath of fire and even what i did play was better i think it is better because it does something more than just hit button catch fish and i think that and then you know use fish to turn it into an ultimate weapon like it's more than just that and in the same way it's wasting your time otherwise like you know even even in zelda like you're catching a fish and then you're getting some heart pieces and stuff like i just it's not fun and like spinning spinning a control stick just isn't rewarding anymore like it's it's so old so i want to see maybe more innovation around um that type of mini game it's been what 20 25 years and we could we yeah. do better than that i think if i had one more i would say it'd be casino based games uh um, oh sure Again, I don't think that they respect players time at mm-hmm. all. And it sucks because like I know that there's a certain excitement to or behind going to a casino. Um yeah. but just the fact that it really is just get as much money as you can play the biggest bang for your buck game and then mm-hmm. loading when you inevitably lose all of your money. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think 
I honestly think like that is something that just needs to go. And I don't know, I guess just more skill based games. Like if you give me a, a, maybe something more like um, golden saucer where they're skill based games versus a casino where they're luck based games. I think that's kind of the route that I would go to fix a lot of games because like, yeah, man, it's adorable, but fuck you, slime <laughs> bingo. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> or, or like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're, you're so cute watching that little slime pick out all the the balls, but like, God, it's so slow and just so tedious. Mm-hmm. Got it. I, I kind of think that if in general for me, again, personally, if I looked at what I'd want to change, it's, it's like, like you said, the casino games, bingo, they're kind of of our world. I want to see something more of the world that I'm in. So like, sure. give me... um. Yeah, give me Gwent, give me uh, Caravan, like other games that are building the the variety of that world. And I think that's what really brings the the fun with mini games. Right. OK, with that, we are going to take another little break. Uh, thank you again, Patrick, for talking about RPG mini games. And we want to hear your thoughts on what are your favorite, least favorite and maybe some games you would want to change in RPGs. Uh, we are on Twitter and Insta, or I guess it's X now. We're on X and Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> At hey RP Gamer, you can follow us there. And then if you do like uh, what you're listening to here on our podcast, please leave us a review and comment there. We'd love to get all that feedback. Okay, we will be right back. And we are back for our middle segment. We are going to talk about what we are currently playing in our long, long, eternal backlog of games. Jason, what are you playing right now? What am I playing? So this is going to be not timely because it's not uh, that spooky season. But for my uh, downstab, uh, for my downstab streams, I'm playing a new game each week and new old game. And the last one I played was actually Fatal Frame 2 on PS2. Um, I never played any of them. You have or have not? I have. Nice. Uh, So played it for maybe two and a half, three hours, and um, I liked it. It was cool. A little archaic for what it is. It's still a little tanky, but it's not as bad as like RE1. Um, But if you're not familiar, it's a PS2 horror game. Two uh, Japanese sisters, I think they're twins, kind of get caught up in this mystical forest town thingy. There's ghosts everywhere. But the whole gimmick is that you have this uh, camera obscura, so you have to have the ghosts that are there you exercise them with the camera but you can only do that if they get close enough to you to take a photo so you're kind of like fighting ghosts with camera but you need to let them get a little bit closer so that you can um, do more damage if you will you know like the the better quality photo you take of them Mm -hmm. the more damage you do to them yeah exactly it's like that weird like blend between a like photo simulator game and a survival horror (laughs) yeah it's pokemon snap but if it was like resident evil snap yeah exactly Uh, (laughs) i'd play that wow uh and so it it was it was fun i thought it was really cool and um it was just a neat game to to run through uh it did get a little a little stale because some of the enemies that you run into are just clearly clearly the same models over and over again which you know is going to happen but it's like eh, more variety would be nice but you do get some i guess what i would call like boss ghosts yeah uh and it's neat because of having studied some japanese lore and like uh culture and stuff there's a lot of um classic uh spookiness from japan so uh the, one of the earliest ghosts you see is uh if you've seen like the ring or you know where she crawls out of the tv uh crawling and her, her hair is down in front of her face that's a very very stereotypical uh depiction of like uh, ghost. japanese scariness yeah in, in japan and so that was there uh, there's also um, like a lady with a broken neck that like floats around, which is also in Haunting of Hill House. If you've seen that too, similar oh, ghost. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it was neat to see those things and kind of see the neat uh, cultural aspects it brings in. And um, it was fun. It was fun to play a spooky game. Haven't actually played a horror game for maybe a couple years. It's been a long time. And it was it was I feel like the last horror feel. game you probably played was when we streamed. Uh, what was that one game? One of the Dark Chronicles games. Oh, yeah, you're right. We did stream um, Little Hope. That's true. That probably is the last one. So we're well over a year, almost two years away. And um, yeah, it's fun. I think you maybe can agree liking survival horror. It brings like a different sense of um, success and like a gameplay when you're like, oh, it's a little scary. Like what's around that corner? It's a different. I think it's scarier than Resident Evil. And I think the scariness still holds up. Like Mm -hmm. you're talking about narrow combat spaces. Um, Thinking of like, (laughs) it's not like 
oh, I'm going to whip out my shotgun or my yeah. grenade launcher. It's like you I literally have, have a camera. That's all you got. Line up a photo <laughs> and make sure that this is a good quality photo. Um, I mean, I just I remember like I played this with my friend Chris, uh, the first yeah. one and the second one. And like there's there they do a very good job of just keeping the like the theme scary and a lot of the things that happen yeah. pop up scary throughout the game. And that's the one with your, you're with your twin sister, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And like the weird stuff your twin sister starts to say as like the game develops mm-hmm. and whatnot. So yeah. It's, Girl, are I you good? Yeah. That's, I'm yeah, like so yeah, worried yeah, exactly. for her. <laughs> I won't ruin things for you by any cool. means, but like they, if you decide to keep playing a game. I would keep playing that one. That is a good nice. one. For yeah. Sure. So far from the PS2 games I've played so far for this stream session, it's been the best one. What about you? What are you playing? Um, I'm playing two games. I'll go through them briefly, uh, and I'm going to recommend both of them for people to play. The first one is Cassette Beasts. It's an indie game. Um, It's kind of like Digimon meets twee but not necessarily. Like the the vibe is the world ends with you, where you feel like there's there's something weird going on. You arrive on this island, and a lot of people live on this island, but everyone's from a different Mm. like period and time. But it's also like you're catching monsters and trying to like unlock the mystery of why you're on this island and how to get home. Okay. Um, so it has like that kind of somber vibe. I don't actually know what's going on in the game, so I'm not spoiling anything because I'm still pretty early. But I'm, I'm wondering if all these people are just dead and they don't know mm. it. And they're on this. Oh, yeah. This looks super Pokemon. I've never heard yeah, of this game. Yeah, but it, it, it came out in the past like few months. It's super fun. Nice. There's a recorded... Um, recording artists like who does vocals for the game and some of them nice. are really good it has it has a vibe like it's a vibe game it's a, it's a vibe i wonder how one people of, are going to be like what's a cassette <laughs> one of, well, seriously yeah. one of the songs is similar to like simple and clean from oh, there you go like kingdom hearts like it just has that like very like hit in your feels vibe so mm-hmm. if you're if you're a pokemon fan or a monster collector fan i would recommend that one the other game i'm playing is called dinkum it is dinkum. a it's a silly name it's a um, a cozy game where you're like dropped off on an Australian island and it is like the blend of Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley. Um, OK, two good I'm, games to blend together. Yeah, like literally. So like the Animal Crossing this of real playing in real time where like whatever time it is in the game matches what it is in real life is gone. Mm-hmm. Um and there's a lot more involvement with the people that are on the island with you. And you just kind of jazz it up and make it a very livable space for a lot of people. I'm, I'm loving it. Like, it's it's fun. My, I'm getting a lot of good mileage on my Steam Deck right now. So if you're if you're fans of cozy games or monster collectors, those are definitely two good pick two good games to pick up. Nice. Would you go with Stardew Crossing or Animal Valley? Uh, Probably Stardew Crossing. I think so, too. I'd play that game right now. Dinkum. We're back for part two of our podcast and as usual we are going to play a game and unfortunately this is the last game of Aww. the season because we but only game do in the game regular, yeah but we are game in the game we're putting and games in our games we heard you like games this game is a new one i don't think we've really played this one before but it's going to be very similar to the other ones we've played and i've come up with the fun title minigame this bitch Oh my god! <laughs> I did not see that earlier. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you see that in the notes now. Yeah, uh, I see that. Uh, basically, how it's going to work is one person is going to say the name of a game that mm-hmm. they know pretty well, and then the other person is going to give them a type of mini game to add to that game, okay. whether it already has a mini game in it or not you're gonna be like okay cool here's this new mini game that you need to add in there and that person the original person is then going to say like okay this is what the mini game would look like this is who would play the mini game these are the rewards and just kind of like have fun and expand on it as much as possible so jason (laughs) why don't you go ahead first and give me a game Okay, and then I'm gonna be the one that's making the mini game for it, Correct. based on what you yeah. tell me. I'm telling, I'm telling oh. you what mini game you will put into this game because we don't. I don't want to give you something that you don't. I don't want to give you a game that you don't. Know yeah, about. yeah. So okay, I'm nervous. Um, okay, so I did make some games that I was like, I know these well, and I feel like they'll be relevant to you and me. Um, can I throw outward your way? Outward. 
Yes. Okay. Yes. So Outward is one of the games that Jason and I streamed recently. Yeah. Um, Played to completion. Jason, too. you are Excited. going to make a card game for what Outward. <laughs> okay. Um, for some reason, I was thinking Outward would be like city building. Um, well, that's outward. actually in that's actually in the game. We just didn't do. Yeah, that you're DLC. right. We didn't do the DLC. You're right. You're right. Never mind. Scratch that. Uh, card game and outward. So you'd think this would be the easiest one, but I don't know if it really would be. Um, okay, so there's not a lot of people in outward. Like the cities aren't that large, so I feel like a card game is going to be exotic. So like, it's not something that people normally do, but it's going to be based off of um, oh, what's a good one? Um fish so like okay there, there are different fish that you can get in outward and so they'll be represented in this card game and so the card game is gonna not be called go fish um it's gonna be called fish it up and so in fish it up how when you catching exactly how catchy uh in fish it up you get a small deck of cards it's only 10 cards and um, you will lay down your fish and then your opponent will lay down a separate fish, um, kind of like war style. So it's at the same time. Um, if your fish is a bigger style of fish than the opponents, um, you consume their fish. But there's a separate rule where you don't want to keep playing big ones, because if someone throws down a like shrimp or something small, like an azure shrimp, uh, they win everything and they take they take your pile. And so you want to get the biggest haul of fish at the end of at the end of the day. OK, um, would there be any there, there are like four different cities in this game? Yeah. Would there be anything different between the different cities? Oh, good call out. Um, yeah, there, there are some different different fish in each zone, too. So I think that there would be um, and there can be maybe a little bit of a of a tell in like what your opponent might be playing because the back of the card might match the zone so like if you're in um what was that hellscape zone where it was all hot Al alabaster what was it oh, called just the desert yeah the desert like the uh fucking you can desert yeah you can tell that their cards are uh the back of their cards are more like sandy looking so you know like ooh, there's a little strategy coming i, I like what am i gonna play next That's cool. uh, but yeah there, there's a variety of uh of different ones and um this is a this is a, a game for the common folk so when um more like higher class people see it they kind of scoff at the the common folk playing their their card games all right um okay my turn sure. um jason my game is final fantasy 6 uh <laughs> a card game uh okay <laughs> so i am thinking give me a give me some sort of in world sport that they would do like a, like a ball like a ball game you know something like that um god what kind of game would they play i feel like they would have their own i mean it kind of makes sense if you think about it like post apocalyptic they're going to have to <laughs> right that well even originally that they would have their own like sports ball you know what i mean mm -hmm, like, beca mm -hmm. because you think about it Maybe volleyball. I could see King Edgar would probably host volleyball tournaments, especially <laughs> because, you know, living in Figaro, he's got the sand and whatnot. So, um, yeah, yeah. volleyball makes sense. Yeah. Basically, every area you'd have different teams that you would play against. So you'd have like the Thamasa mages <laughs> or That's the, cute. Yeah, the the Imperial soldiers would have a team and the the returners and whatnot. And it'd be kind of like Blitzball, so they like bracket style as you're playing mm -hmm. through. They would still keep this up um in the world of ruin and whatnot, but you play in the desert of Figaro. I think that would be super, super fun. Are there any then, like uh any like un unlockable like secret teams or something that would so be in this game? I think that like you would only get to have your party members but i think the focus would be like who you play is mm -hmm. who you put on your team of your characters is kind of like what their abilities are 
like uh tara <laughs> might be like an average player but like after a while of playing playing she could morph and then like her spikes would be huge you yeah know what i yeah. mean or who can uh, someone be in the the magicite armor or whatever they just use magitech that, armor, that ma- yes. magitech so, the, the te- well, yeah. so so the opposing teams would all have their own little advantages and i imagine yeah. like the the villain team having yeah that makes sense that makes sense yeah so like basically all the characters would just have their own little special ability like edgar might have like a little tool like a mechanical <laughs> tool to play Cute. Yeah. and whatnot yeah that that's how that would go i'm i'm upset that game's not even in final right? fantasy 6 i'm telling Pix- you like pixel half, remaster, half the things on. we come up with on this game really <laughs> should or the show should be <laughs> games okay jason what okay. is the game for you um i thought you would enjoy this one can you throw a uh, persona my way uh, i've only played three which, and five okay. so if you want to pick three or five would be great how about three three is more yeah, relevant let's, to me let's me. let's go three um okay thinking about what is already in that game Mm-mm. okay jason your mm. mini game is called is a dating game called oh, get A- get akahiko laid oh my god akahiko the, senpai the, the whole the whole <laughs> mini game is literally about getting him laid okay um <laughs> jesus how would okay so game work <laughs> the yes exactly so get akihiko senpai laid so there is a um a rumor around uh school that akihiko senpai hasn't had sex and um toxic masculinity is telling him he should the rumor started because he's really good with his hands and fists right so i think people think that he does things with those at home at night um so yeah, the yikes <laughs> yikes he takes the gloves off and he's still or, strong or yay. this yeah this is exactly this is my good hand uh okay so there's that and the game revolves around you as your um your character developing a a new extra social link and so this social link is actually how you are your uh, the hookup artist card if you will so you're no the the wingman so it's the wingman <laughs> and so you're trying to get Akihi, akihiko to have people to like him and so you need to learn a little bit about him first and then you do that through taking him out to activities that are the mini games so maybe you go to an arcade and you play ddr there's like a mini game for ddr so you're like um, training training him how to be a good date basically kind of yeah exactly and then when you see you see him grow a little bit you can go to other characters um to make it not awkward, let's say it's just characters that aren't in your party, because um, that that could be weird for the story. Um, but then you might tell him like, oh, like I heard he was really good at, you know, he's really good at baking bread. Like that's a mini game that you did. And someone's like, I love baking bread. And so you try to get them to, you know, get closer and closer. And eventually they they hook up. But each time um, the social link isn't maxed out till it happens. So once you get one person to go, they inevitably fail. And then you meet back with Akihiko. He's like, hey, it didn't work. So you have to keep trying again and again. Um until you get to the end and then maybe he he finally gets gets some, some would, sex would there be like a time limit like it starts in october and you have until <laughs> like uh march and march like, to get every, done every candidate that you snag maybe they have like uh, different requirements um and he gets to choose at the end who he wants to shack up with yeah that that could be true that could be good yeah i think that'd be fun and then um yeah at the end of um let's just say march if you've had at least like one or two people, you've you succeeded in a sense in this game. He has to make a decision. But will they say yes or no? Like, oh, that's up to you. Or maybe they're all rated like some are like C list and some are. A yeah, exactly. And <laughs> this tier and like the this girl is like S tier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, this boy is this boy is only B tier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. And that could be good. And then I think um, what is the purpose of this? I think um, if he <laughs> he can uh, once you've succeeded, he can go into battle with like an, an invigorated stat buff (laughs) so like that's that's the reason why you want to have that so you can have him be his best self (laughs) all right okay maybe it's best that one's not in the game (laughs) (laughs) those fists those fists though (laughs) um i'm gonna say let's do a game for dragon quest 11 (laughs) a sylvando themed like city building slash revamping mini game uh so i'm gonna pivot just a little bit uh mm. Silvando's mini game is every town in the game has an i wouldn't say like eligible bachelor in the sense of 
he's someone that you would want to date. But I yeah. feel like it's it's almost the flip side of your game with uh, Akihiko, where <laughs> um, Silvando is responsible for making this person level up in five different ways. Um, mm-hmm. Food, style, hair culture so he's the fab five yeah yeah. (laughs) Yeah. so basically silvando would be the fab one and he would do a queer eye makeover on different people in like gondolia and the different cities Um, oh it could just yeah silvando eye for the gondolia guy it could be great there there, there, (laughs) perfect there you go there's the name of the game right there and he just goes across and he basically just helps them improve and all these things and all the mini games are kind of similar to fantasy life where like you know mm, you okay. have to c- mm. cut his hair and you have to make it successful or you teach him how to cook and as you're cooking you do the mini game with him and if you do it correctly they learn and they do it correctly and it's a bunch of stuff like that i would love oh my god so much i wanted fun. that to be canon i want that, that i'm just going to imagine that's my head canon that happened and that's how the world succeeded after after i mean Silvando's split. whole thing is about spreading love and yeah happiness. spreading love exactly so, i mean it's oh just god. it's perfect Patrick, that was incredible. I, I mean, come on. I, when is it not, Jason? Come on. <laughs> wow, okay, okay. Calm down. Our, okay. That does it, Jason. Oh my god. We're done. We're done the season. We're done Mike with minigames. We're, we are done with season three of RP Gamer. Crazy. Super this, crazy. This was fun. Yeah, Question I agree. mark. Um, <laughs> First of all, before we talk about this season and how it went, I do want to make sure that I say a special thank you to all of our guests from this season. If you're For just sure. tuning in now, we have Professor Bopper, GC Vasquez, Cullen Gaming Productions. We had K-Bash on here a few times, Brendan from The Crawl, Aiden Mower, and David Vink. I want to say a special thank you to all of you for like making this a star-studded season. We had so many i feel like there were more episodes with guests and there weren't which is nuts to think about especially yeah. considering a past one so again thank you all make sure that if you haven't yet you give all of them a follow they all provide so different content in so many different ways um some of them are authors some of them are documentarians uh <laughs> <laughs> nice um but all providing great content um and a lot of them you'll see in the future on our season uh jason what were some of the Ooh. highlights of the season for you oh for sure the, the guests are really fun so i think doing these recordings uh i mean i love you patrick it's great and we we talk all the time but but getting getting the other perspective is really cool mm-hmm. and it's just neat to see like how how you bounce off of those ones um but it was just fun to connect with other other folks to talk about games in general uh standouts to me i know i mentioned it uh in our uh, discord too but the castlevania episode with uh, professor bopper was fantastic bopper is was so he's just so great he really is yeah super great and it's, it was just really cool to just talk about that series and be like man i'm with people that like are like me and that, that was really exciting and then similar with gaming productions it just felt like such a fun like nostalgic look back at rpgs and it, it was just fun and when when doing these recordings just don't feel like it doesn't feel like anything. It's just like, I'm just, I'm just chatting and talking. Like there's no, there, it doesn't feel like we're going off of a script. We're talking about this. We, we need to cover this topic. You're just going through it. It's just fun and engaging. And and I love that about the season. It was, it was definitely a standout. I love seeing our growth <clears throat> over the past three years and how great it's been. Um, I mean, the listeners don't know this, but when we had Professor Bopper on in season one, I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> because here we had someone who had a large following, which is, and he was one of the reasons, like, why I decided to take on this journey of creating a video game podcast and YouTube cool. channel and whatnot. And he actually came on, and I was so nervous that I flubbed the introduction for him. And I was like, I love you, buddy, but can I go back and do this later? And he was like, Yeah, maybe we're fine. We're good. And now coming on and like not even breaking a sweat with having people yeah. like, K bash who like who epicness in his videos or mm. Aiden Mower, who's like a professional author of like video game nonfiction um, coming in. I think it's been really cool to see the, like just the growth that we've had as 
a channel and even to hear like some of the people who are coming on our podcast are more nervous about it than we are like yeah k bash was great and excellent <laughs> but i mean he was a little nervous coming on i don't blame him because it's intimidating but all i mean is that it's like it's refreshing to see people who have had yeah. such such success care enough about something that they're nervous about doing it right yeah um, and you could feel you could feel really samey like oh like i feel those vibes too or like i'm glad that we we feel similarly because like i was feeling that too and it's cool to think like i cherish you so much and you feel that way too and it's it was a neat neat moment um and then i think the other big win this season has just been really our discord blowing up and all yeah. the people our community we have on there and our patron sponsors and whatnot and it's just all the way that you, that you guys have made our community special so a big special shout out to you all and like thank you for all of the support that you've given it really makes doing this so much easier and fulfilling definitely 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 all right well for one last time for uh this season of rp gamers podcast um we'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think of this episode uh what are the mini games you would add to rpgs what are some of the ones that you think that we we added that you liked Again, uh, Twitter slash X and Instagram at HeyRPGamer. Patrick just mentioned our Discord. Um, it is definitely growing. I think last time I checked, we have like triple digit people. I'm so yeah, impressed. Yeah, it's nuts. Uh, talk about games there. Like, uh, I know we're going to be a little bit more uh, radio silent for podcasts nowadays, but we're definitely not silent over there. So keep keep talking, keep chatting. We love talking about games. And we and do giveaways last... over there too. Like, we, we will be doing more giveaways in the future for free games just for our people in our community. So make sure you check we're that giving out. Giving it away. Too. And then uh, speaking of people in our community, if you do like support or if you do want to support us, uh, patreon.com slash RP gamer, you can support that way. It really shows us that you love and care about what we're doing and, and helps us grow, too. And um, just special shout out for you all, too, for what you what you get for us. If you enjoyed listening to us today, be on the lookout for future content um, like bonus XP's, Hyper Ripes or YouTube coming up throughout the fall until we start season four. Um Jason, any last words before we say the last lines? Wow, my heart like skipped a beat. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm good. Like I, I'm, I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. We appreciate you all for listening and hope you had a great time. Now go out there and get gaming.